I had a great question in the last video. So loud. About this nitty cutter. Can you double cut with the snitty cutter? And we're gonna find out. The only difference between the way I usually double cut and the way that we're gonna double cut today is you see how that's now curling back on me. Usually I'll put the film with the film facing the glass, but I want my Sharpie lines to be drawn on the liner. Oh yeah, snitty cutter, right? So we can use it right on here. So I want my liner to be the side that's drawn on. So we need to put that to the surface first. Cut that off. So we're flipping this side around. So now I have window tint stuck to window tint and the liner is facing me. And what that'll do too is cause your surface pattern to slide more. So you do wanna be careful of those patterns shifting apart when you're moving things around. That's gonna make it a little bit more challenging until you get a couple nice, maybe more than, more than a couple, but we'll see. Sweat that back down. Just one of these locked together. But I need these patterns locked together in a way that they're not gonna wanna slide around. So it's probably gonna take a few extra squeegee strokes. Just get a little bit more thorough with it. And then it's still, see that slide there? It's still sliding. So be very conscious about that when you're doing this. So, but the rules still apply. The only difference on this one is because we used a 40 or 36 inch roll, split it in half, I don't have a factory bottom edge. So we're also gonna be making one additional cut down here. But we can still do that with uh, the snitty cutter. So I'm gonna mark my sides, mark my bottom edge. That way I give myself all the information that I need to know where to make my cuts. Boom, just like that. Now we need to roll this window down. Shit, they, I forgot, this is a G8, they put the switches. So we're gonna roll that down. They put the switches in the middle. It's like a Jeep thing. But they think this is like the only Pontiac they do that on. Anyways, so we're gonna take a blade, let's snap this off, get a nice sharp point. And again, we wanna be really careful. It's not sliding as much, that's good. Just be extra firm. The more surface area that you can tack these together, the less anything's gonna slide on you. Poke that in. Top edge knife, all the way across. Beautiful. So now we have four cuts, three, three cuts. I can count. Three cuts to make with the snitty. Cut number one uh, can be anywhere. So let's just start here on the side. There's my line. We're gonna go straight up. And we're just gonna keep this outside that line. All the way up. Boom. That's cut number one. Cut number two can be the right side or the bottom. Let's just go with the right side here. So I even stopped this line short, but look, just keep going in that direction or draw your line, I don't, I don't know, whatever, whatever you need to do. But that, that's exactly what I need. And then for this bottom cut, same thing. We're just gonna stay a little bit below that line down there. We're gonna slide this in, and then... So now we're gonna have a nice overlap underneath for when we need to tuck the film. So that's all my cuts there. Somebody also mentioned you could use a pair of scissors. I find scissors, like unless you can get them to do that shearing motion, to be kind of annoying. That's why I really like the snitty, but 
Fair point. You could use scissors and round the corners without ever having to cut on the glass. So, hope you guys like that little bit. For those of you that want to hang around a little bit longer, we'll go through, install. We're going to trim these off. Round all our corners. You can see where this one started to trail a little bit. So, while we're taking care of our corners, you can just straighten that out. Always a little wider than a little bit shorter is going to be a good thing when it comes to small stuff like that with the corners and whatnot. You don't, I don't want you to confuse that with make your pattern super wide or anything. Because the wider they are, the worse it's going to be. But, round off those corners. We've got some patterns. Now here's the other annoying part about double cutting this way. So the pattern was sliding around, now I have two, but because the liner's facing me right now, I have to separate these, and then the top pattern actually is gonna stay on this window. So this is the part that I don't like. When you're holding two patterns, you gotta kinda like awkwardly set that back down, separate it, and then we'll take this one and we'll bring this over to the other side of the car and continue. So yeah, we've effectively double cut our patterns. We're gonna shrink it. We're gonna shrink the other side. Let's just go through and install one of them. Might as well keep this thing rolling. And see if they really, I mean, you said that they did, but do they really work? Let's find out. There's one side shrunk. Don't fall, Mike. Don't fall on the hose there. Setting things up for shrinking, I'll always coat the window in a nice, even layer of water there. Take my squeegee. Squeegee it from the center. Go down, center, go down, leaving a little gap here and about an inch gap off the bottom. Gives you a good amount of space to get those fingers to pop on up. What, what's this little guy doing on the floor? Let's put him back. Looking good. This, probably need to straighten that little guy out just a little bit more. So now that we have this Sharpie, when we peel the liner, that Sharpie line is going to peel off with the liner. If you drew on the tin side, which I'm sure you can, you'd probably still be able to take like some alcohol and wipe off the Sharpie line, but it's kind of getting buried over into the sides. It's not going to be a super easy thing to get to, so that's why I would probably want to put it on the liner. But feel free to experiment with that kind of stuff. I'm always learning interesting things from playing around with all of this and seeing how people adapt to it. I didn't even think to talk about double cutting in the last video. What the hell is wrong with me? There we go. We got that. Let's fix that corner right quick. See, just this little bump right here. So if we want to take that little bump. Much better. Now nothing's gonna overhang the ends. That looks good. Corner looks nice. Sweet. So let's cover it, clean it, and install it. Oh, there's not even, there's not even a cover here. He just picked this up a couple days ago. So this thing is like covered in a whole bunch of dust. Those are old door covers. Where's new door covers? Let's go find them. Here it is, buried under the filthy rags that clean this, that clean this car. Actually, we should probably give it a bath. 
because it'd probably be better for it. Then it'd be cleaner <laughs> than when it came in. Okay, so we need a couple things. We need a razor blade. We need a towel for the top edge. And that's it. Everything's all set. Everything's cut, shrunk. Stupid switches in the middle. Why you, why you do that? It's because it's cheaper. So on a car with a good amount of dirt on it, like this, this car's got some grime. I'm gonna be a little extra thorough about everything. The edges, the corners, and it honestly might not look that much different <laughs> compared to what I usually do. Razor, cause razor blade really takes care of most everything. but I might go over it two, three times just to be sure until I feel that it's clean, especially digging out these sides. Making sure anything that would be collected on the window is then knocked off. You can almost hear it, a little like dirt as you're cleaning it. And all this so we don't have any drip problems. Clean it. We're gonna go top to bottom. I need my triage. Why don't I have one in my tool belt? I don't know. This is an easy reach. These things are awesome too, by the way. But I wanna use a triage instead. All right, I'm gonna grab a new, new one. But a reason why I'm gonna use a triage instead of an easy reach is an easy reach wears out faster. Triage has a material that just honestly lasts longer. So these will still wear out and these will still scratch your film over time when you're digging them into harsh, dirty areas. They'll start to rough up, anything would. But the easy reaches They'll just rough up way faster, so I save them for particular situations. I still love using them. Swipe down, swipe down. All right, let's grab our pattern. It's been sent here nice and patient. Peel. Pull this down. Coat, lift, too many steps. There's too many steps with two staging. Just bottom load it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a talk for another day. All right, so I'm gonna slide this into the right here and I'll pull this back and I like lift it off the car. That way I can get it back into this side. We're just gonna slide this over. There we go. Don't rough it up. Just be patient. Give it a little whap every once in a while. Line that up to the top. We're gonna check the outside right quick. That's good. Could go just a hair deeper over in here. It's pretty close though. Nice. Good, covered, covered, sweet. Exactly where I need it. Line up that top. Start squeegeeing from the center. Work your way out. Get that top edge. Sweep. It's definitely locked in place now. So we're gonna roll this up.
So honestly, that part right there, when I pulled the liner, that is where the most amount of dirt is gonna rush in to your pattern when you're two staging. That's really why main areas that I'm focused about taping is like right in here. That's where the most amount of that shit comes from. Let's peel back this bottom seal. We're gonna tuck it. Come on, come on, come on. Sharp seal on this one. There we go. Let's go down. Finesse, finesse. Once you get below it, or once you get that seal pulled back, it's easy to tuck into. Just sharp getting that shank in there. Bah. Looking good. Home stretch here. Then we'll rinse it off, take a look. But these types of swipes, where you're going around like the whole pattern deep into the seal, that'll definitely start to rough up any tool, but especially on the older dirty cars, that's where they're even worse. So it's like you'll pull out that tool and you'll see like black grime on it sometimes. All that is putting wear and tear. Take this out of here. Good. Couple firm squeegees across the entire thing. You usually see extra water collect from doing that. Just make sure everything's as ironed out as you can. Don't baby it too much. Just be really direct. Make sure your blade's clean and then do that kind of swipe. So one thing too is I always wipe my hand like that across the squeegee blade. See that little grime there? That type of stuff. Eventually that'll start wearing away your tools. It's just cost of doing business. Let's check it out. Cross our fingers. Hopefully it turned out good. Speaking of fingers. <laughs> Those of you that have waited to the very end, we have one little finger there. See, it happens to me too, but that's why I'm extra glad that I taped the seals. So, since you're here, let's finish this off. We're gonna warm this up. Now, with a seal being this loose, you could also do this from like the inside here and just like heat that up. But let's say if the seal was mostly blocking that finger. What you're gonna do is you're gonna warm this area up. You put your hand on the inside and you're gonna feel until it really starts warming up, until it starts to hurt to touch. This one's starting to run away on me. This is actually a really easy one. But the point is that, is that you need to dry it out. Take a tri-edge, press hard, and thoroughly sweep. And then there you go. As long as it's dried out past that edge and you go all the way, it's not coming back. Looks good. She's all done. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any more questions. See ya.